What's up guys, this is Justice Altoona with another voice of JST, and um, in this one, it's yet another topic about um, horror games, because lately, it's really been an interesting topic, and uh, the more I think about it, the more I begin to understand what type of survival horror game it is that people would want. Something I would like to play that still incorporates a great level of action, however, it doesn't have to compromise or do any of the things that make it like last-gen games or make it like... Um, older games. I, I think there's a lot of features of, in my in my opinion, exemplary um, horror games such as Alan Wake, aspects of Fear 2 and 3, um, and aspects of like Dead Space 1 and Dead Space 2 that really made them stand out. So people can say, oh, but they're all action or whatever. But think of RE4. It really managed to blend horror and action, not because uh, of just some sort of magic pixie dust they sprinkled on the game, but rather it's the way in which it implemented the features and it did things that played on a horror. And I feel like the problem with horror games nowadays that maybe people would lead people say, uh, lead people to say that they're not scary is not because that they're, they're you know, they're 100% not scary to anyone because they might be scary to some people. And to be fair, they're still fantastic games despite not being strictly survival horror, but rather what it is is they haven't employed certain features and I think I don't want games to repeat um, similar things about the game but rather to collaborate with a lot of different features of what makes horror games fantastic so in that way we can actually get a horror game that plays well is looks good you know has great graphics but is truly gruesome because I think what's not being done is they're not taking the graphical capability to make something disturbing and create an atmosphere that's really crazy. Like think of like the graphics of Crisis, but with the atmosphere of like Resident Evil 4 or something. Think of uh, the action but complete insanity of Fear 2 mixed with the tension of Alan Wake. Like it, I think it's possible. I believe it's possible. Uh, uh, I believe it is fully possible to make a horror game that still you know that plays good is an enjoyable game and is completely thrilling. Now, I made some points to basically highlight the different features of things I think would make a fantastic thriller horror experience. Um, this is just my opinion, this is what I've collected. Now, first of all, I think you need to be alone. I think co-op is fine, um, and co-op would have to be a completely different experience, but, I mean, for me to talk about how co-op would work in a horror setting, I have to, you know, make something completely different. I mean, for example, let's just say that there could be bits in the co-op experience where uh, you wouldn't know this, but you can't... Well, I mean, I don't know how that would work. Uh, I, I would say something, suggest something like, you can't hear your co-op partner, but many people, especially on Xbox, would think that there's something wrong with their mics, and I don't know, they think there's something wrong with the game. I'm not sure if they'd be too happy with that. Or maybe bits where you get separated, that kind of thing. I mean, it's been done before, but not uh, to a great level. But, as I said, I want to focus on just um, being a singular character. First of all, the character you start off with ha might doesn't have to be a regular person and just your average Joe with like no experience. It might be someone uh, just normal who probably isn't expecting the horror that's going to happen to them. Whether or not they deal with it is down to their personality, but it has to be someone who's alone. Uh, companions and scares are far between. I find that some of the scariest horror games where you're pretty much alone for the majority of the game, you rarely see people, and seeing people is like a, a brief respite before you end up not seeing them again. And like that few and far between, especially in games like Alan Wake, where you sort of like dive into the darkness and you have to deal with so much and you don't see people for ages that truly make it quite terrifying sometimes. Those really long alone moments sort of make you afraid to even go back. Like one of the scariest parts of um like I'd say Half Life Two is like Ravenholm and what made that so bad is it was literally just you in that one town with all of these zombies. Now another thing is good controls, like Alan Wake for example, but enemies must be smart and disturbing, as well as rarely seen. I mean, if you can set up an atmosphere, something like what Dead Space 2 did with its Ishimura part, but make that atmosphere done in a way that it's still consistently uh, worrying, that there is always this feeling of threat, that the enemy could pop up at any time um, from anywhere, but you don't you don't always see it. I mean, obviously, you, can make, you don't have to make the monster as powerfully disturbing or make it look really ridiculous. It can be something like a necromorph, it can be something like an alien or whatever, but as long as the enemy is done in a way that when it does show up, you think, I'm going to die if I don't take care of this very quickly. I have to figure out how to survive. Maybe it might involve hiding. Now, even though I, I said that a stealth horror game might not work, 
I think a stealth horror game would be perfect. Think of some of the most tense moments you've done in a stealth game, but just imagine this time you're not in control, you're not the one with the gun and the power. What if you're just a person hiding behind like a chair or something, where, where, whereas this um, monstrosity, think of like the tensest moments in a movie, like, you know, where this monstrosity is walking by and you have to hide behind a chair, completely terrified that if you move a single muscle it might hear you. You know, think of being in cover, like, you know, just like with, let's just say, an Xbox, the left trigger button, uh, hiding from something as it's stalking by, you know, I think stuff like that would be pretty tense, definitely. Another thing about that, and related to that, is the character has to be not so much weak, but barely able to defend themselves. Like, they might have some experience, they might figure out a way to fight back, but I wouldn't say they don't need to be an action here. If they want to be an action, we, we could make a supernatural shoot or something like Fear 2, but if we want to make a straight-up survival horror game, make this person who isn't exactly an average but just could be anybody as long as they can't deal with whatever's coming up, uh, be someone who either has to run or use certain tools against the monsters, either diversionary tactics to try and run away, uh, weapons they might find, just like Alan Wake, uh, he found like uh, different weapons like handguns and shotguns and stuff, or maybe use the environment to your advantage to just figure out ways to like basically run like if you could figure out ways to run or figure out ways to meet people or, like i think in alan wake the whole light thing was really good but if, if 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 it could be something that you have to use something that is beyond your control to fight something that's beyond your control i think that's a really interesting aspect um the storyline should be able to be a reflection of the character but also a reflection of the character in relation to other characters. So it might be an exploration of the person's personality, might be an exploration of the person's life, but also be them in relation to others. And they, it has to be an exploration that basically characterizes them as well as other people. Because obviously by the end of the game you want to understand this character and see whether or not they have anything directly to do with this or whether they're just trying to survive it. And also other characters have to be involved in, you know, kind of like people who help people who betray all that kind of thing. Now. I'd like an implicit choice system, not an ex explicit one with, you know, moral choices or anything, but rather the, the things you do have consequences and maybe the enemy might grow stronger based on what you did, like you decided to go this way instead of that way, so you might have to deal with a much worse enemy um, than if you went the other way, or if you chose to take something else, it might create an issue later on in the future. I'm not saying something so game-changingly big that it makes it frustrating there's a good and a right choice, but rather you have a different experience and they, be, they can be dealt in different ways. This has been done well in games where you're given an implicit choice and that choice will basically lead to something like you can either deal with this or deal with that. So on a second playthrough you see, okay, so what happened if I went this way? You know, so let's just say you went this way, you met up with this enemy, it was horrible, it was hard to like defeat like sort of like a really powerful berserker that you had to hide from and make it run into containers or something. Or if you went this other way, you dealt with much smaller enemies, but one of your um, companions helped you, but one of your companions ended up dying, leaving you stranded in the dark and it's raining. I know I'm just making this up as I go along, but you get the idea. Um, that, that said, there has to be an element of just no hope, like things always going wrong, hope snatched away at the very last minute. Something that made animes like Dead Man Wonderland and Mirai Nikki so exciting was this feeling that there's always something going to go wrong. Just when you think things are going right, something ridiculous happens, somebody dies, someone gets hurt. You know, something always gets in the way that just makes you think that what made me possibly think that anything could ever get better. I think that, that feeling of tension is really, really good. And I think some, something that needs to be re reiterated. Um, also, dynamic enemy encounter. It's been done to a degree in some games, but yes, I would love scripted sections. I'd say let the game be probably like 60%, 70% maximum scripted, but have places where any enemy can appear at any time. It can be a different enemy variety, and it'll mix things up. So when you get to a certain point, you don't know exactly where enemies are going to spawn from, and you have to basically, dep based on where you are, you are decide um, how you're going to deal with them. Let's just say like you were in a house, and then suddenly you hear, you hear like an enemy rattling on the door and that didn't happen before in one of your playthroughs so now in this playthrough you have to use elements of the room you're in to your advantage to survive I think something like that would be really intense and especially if I had good controls like a cover system or a context based system where it's something like you had to pick up like a, a very small kitchen knife and hide behind the couch and just either wait for it to go or see if you can get in the back or something and run away like you know something that really puts you in a situation that allows you to feel like this is something you do in a normal situation you know but it, it's still the enemy is still much power much more powerful than you and that's that's another thing um variety in the enemies themselves the enemy encounters can be um varied but they have to play upon our fears some of the most exciting parts of resident evil 4 are the parts where 
that creates enemies that play basically on our, the types of fears that w work based on our senses. Sound, for example, hearing you know enemies in the distance and hearing different kinds of enemies and thinking, what could that be? Where is that coming from? Even the music in Resident Evil 4 set you on edge because you knew something was going on. The reg the regenerator bit was one of the most terrifying parts because you knew they were near based on that heavy breathing sound. Now. It could also be an enemy that works based on sound. That you're like you're in a, a very low lit area, and there's an enemy that has incredible hearing, and then might charge at you if it hears you. So you have to move very, very slowly. So you can use the good controls and cover system to move slowly, because if the enemy hears you, he will charge right through the cover and like try to rip you to pieces. So let's just say in this game, you can only take so little. Like if you get hurt, you might have to crawl, or if you take little damage, the sh then the you know the character shows visible. Uh, damage and such like uh, or another thing sight obviously darkness is a great tool that's that's the first thing but it could be you know situations where it's dark and you can't see the enemies situations where it's um you know badly lit or your flashlight you know doesn't work too or like fear too or it could be invisible enemies like um resident evil 4 invisible enemies where you could only hear their footsteps something like that or an enemy that isn't so much invisible an enemy that might be behind you for example like an enemy that will never be caught in front of you um or acts in a way that doesn't get seen easily like the stalkers from dead space 2 something like that's very exciting i think and uh obviously i've already said uh well, hearing because it's another point i wrote you know being able to hear the enemies is a big thing now since i said something about um your character's reactions dynamic character reactions would be nice such as after certain fights maybe a, um a saying or two uh, a monologue or a visual cue like obviously uh, maybe like ripped clothes or like towards the end like they, they're they visibly scarred from it like their clothes are torn maybe they have to change their clothes maybe they have bandages or something I wouldn't want something completely horrific as like they lose a limb but losing a limb would be pretty bad like especially let's say you made a, a seriously bad choice in the game an implicit choice of course and you ended up losing a limb or just losing a part of your body um, something like that like maybe you lost your eye they, some, something like that but other than that, I'd say if that wasn't in the game completely, but something smaller, like the character has a, um, you know, they they say something based on circumstances like what's happening to me or what's going on or, you know, something like uh, how am I going to deal with this? And maybe after a particularly hard, let's just say it took you, sorry about that, uh, no sirens outside, let's just say there was a part of the game that took a long time against a very grueling enemy and let's just say on one playthrough it took you five minutes so it wasn't that hard another playthrough took you like eight minutes so the character sort of like just completely uh spontaneously sort of breaks down and starts crying like puts his hand on his side and like like has to compose himself that kind of thing or, or maybe sort of stumbles around and can't, can't really deal with stuff so whereas it doesn't compromise anything like you know controls it's this, these little things that really give you this impact of like what this horror is doing to them the person finally the ending now an ending has to leave questions it has to resolve stuff or maybe introduce what it is you're dealing with or where it came from but it has to leave the main character feeling battle scarred you can have a feeling of closure and maybe even a plot twist but you but it has to end up you know creating a sense that you know you've been powerless and there is nothing that you can do about it but you've survived it something like silent hill where you escaped from silent hill or uh, resident evil 4 where they you know they got off the island something like that this feeling that you've escaped the horror but it still exists and you know sometimes some of the best horror endings are where it's like they managed to get out but they fear for the the person that's in that you know that has to deal with it next a, a fantastic setup for a, for the next horror game could be you escape from let's just say whatever horrible thing it was and then you n then see one of the character's companions completely oblivious ending up in the same circumstance and then that could be a setup for the sequel where they could go through the same similar things you know with better controls and you know, new ideas and they might run into the same character later on who's battle scarred and torn but basically tries to tell them ways of dealing with it i mean psychological uh it, it could it, it could be psychological it could be um physical it could be whatever but it'd be interesting to see a, a horror game um, implement all of these features and basically do